Have your children. Have your life. No one will come up with God except by me. There is no alternative. Good day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again today. The program is still viewed from the top, brought to you courtesy of Leaders with God Ministry. Um, we are continuing on the series on finance of the ministry. At the last episode, we were able to see God's provision for the inter- intertestament when Jesus Christ was alive. And we saw that transition, how, how he was able to prepare his disciples for transitioning into New Testament. We saw that from Luke 12, verse 36 to 40. And, uh, you know, we saw how that the most important thing, the most important currency they needed to have wasn't um, Naira or dollars. It was their faith. And with that faith, they can draw anything. They can, they can trust God to meet all their needs. And we're able to start off on God's provision for the, in, for the New Testament. And we saw that God's provision for the New Testament is actually, you know, it's, 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 it's in excess. You know, God made abundant provisions for his servants in the New Testament. We read from Galatians 6, 6. We read from um, 1 Timothy 5, 17. Now we saw that those people who actually label and teach us the word of God, they deserve double honor. Some version says that they deserve double pay. Some version says they deserve bonus. And uh, we are not, it's not just for the ministers to know that, yes, God has abundant provision. All her, we that are believers, we are able to also see our responsibility, how we need to shower them with overwhelming love and, you know, and care, and how we are to share with them everything good. The Bible says we should share with them everything good. So we can see that there is so much provision that has been made for financing the ministry in the New Testament. And Pastor Lily said something last week. He said 10% cannot do the job. 10% cannot push the gospel you know, to the entire world. So we actually need more than that. And God has made that provision for us. So today we're going to continue on uh, God's provision for financing the ministry in the New Testament. I'll hand over now to Pastor Dele. Uh, you're welcome, sir. We are happy to have you again today. Thank you. I'm happy to have you too, and everyone watching live and those that will be watching from home. And uh, we thank God for His grace. And thank you for a great uh, summary that you have done. Great job. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being here again. We receive grace to speak that that become it only the oracles of God. Let our hearts be open. Let it be your flesh. Let your word be sufficient for us. Let life, light, and love in your world impart our lives, transform us, make us better people in the name of Jesus. Thank you for our trans. Thank you for understanding. Thank for the power to do in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's just, just, just move straight to the next scripture. First Corinthians chapter 9. New Testament provision for the minister and the ministry. First Corinthians chapter 9. We're going to read nearly the entire chapter. So I will, because of our time, because we need to move. Yes, we are in need other versions I will call for it. I think we need to we need to read uh I need to we need to read intermittently to save some time. But I would have wanted us to read the old chapter, then we start verse by verse. Because this is the verse that is most this is the chapter that's most elaborate on issues of uh sponsorship of ministry and ministers so elaborate so clear the lucidity is high so we need to look at it very properly and uh, understand what god is telling us there still talking about god's provisions for ministry and ministers under the new testament dispensation first Corinthians 9 let's read one to four first first one am i not an apostle Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? And not seen my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of my apostleship are ye in the Lord. My answer to them 
that do examine me is this. Have we not power to eat and to drink? Have we not power to lead about his sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord, and save us? I'm advice five. Thank you. Those verses have shown to us that if truly God has called a man, it is not sufficient for him to have access to the good things that God has blessed his people with. He has to be able to raise a people. He said, are ye not the evidences of my work in the Lord? <laughs> Glory to God. So everything just because they are pastors, everybody holds them. <laughs> Praise God. God can touch the heart of anybody. Even one believer will give to you. But it's not an obligation. It is an obligation on them you minister to. Or somebody God has given that responsibility to be a financial pillar for your ministry. That's different. But for all the other one, it is, as far as you are concerned, it's not, it's not an obligation to you. It may be the obligation to God, but it's not the obligation to you. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so here, he established that he was called of God, and he was doing his job. He raised the people, and he had a right to the good things of life that he had. Praise God. Not only him, allowance is made for his family. That was allowed to get to verse 5. So we have a right to lead about a wife like Peter, all right, and some other apostles too. We have that right. It is a right. I want you to note it is a right. Because I've been confronted many times by many. Who, in fact, they almost say I'm the devil for not accepting money in certain, under certain circumstances. Uh, I, I, I put it in two ways. I put it either as ignorance or as a guilt conscience. God guilty conscience. Because uh, a situation where somebody is almost, uh, almost demonizing me <laughs> for not using my right. It's a right. I'm not sinning by not using my right. Praise God. <laughs> I, can ref I, can, I can decide to waive it. We will get to the point where we will say where those rights will preferably be waived. And if you don't waive them at that point, you are still not sinning. It depends on the intimacy of your work with God. It depends on what you are in it for. It depends on what is more important to you. The truth of the matter is, it is a right. However, I try not to live my life based on entitlement mentality. Praise God. That informs all the counsel I had given before now. You don't want to live by entitlement spirit or entitlement uh, mentality. Praise God. So you're saying that we have this right. Now, whether we use it or not is our choice. You are not the one to decide that. Praise God. You that will minister to you are not the one to decide that. You are to make the provisions. We are to take decision whether we want to use our right or not. Praise God. Hallelujah. It, remember, it's a payment due to this man. You are not paying God. You are paying the men who are the ones laboring. Praise God. And God ordained that they should, their name should be met by you. So he was saying that not only him, his family had a right to be well taken care of by the reason of the work that he was doing. It's just like somebody who has other jobs that he's doing. He has a right to live well. But he has to work hard. That was what he showed. By saying, you are actually the testimonies for the fact that I have a ministry. And I'm doing it well. Praise God. Five to six. I would like to take that from message. Verse five. Oh, it's actually three to seven together. Okay, I'm not sure in standing up to my critics. We who are on missionary assignment for God have a right to decent accommodations. And we have a right to support for us and our well, families. Let, 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 let's let's it very well. very well. I'm not please, sure please, in please, standing please. up to my critics. I am, I am not shy in standing, standing up, up to, my up to my critics. All right? All right? Go ahead. Go ahead. 
we who are on missionary assignments for God have a right uh, uh. To, to decent accommodations. And we have no, a not right. Not just accommodation, but decent, decent one. one. Right. And we have no. a right to support for us and our families. We have a right for support for us and our family. Because we are all for the cause of the advancement of the gospel. When it comes to a missionary, every child of God, whether he ministers to you directly or not, because the mission work is our job. It's not his job. He's doing it on behalf of all of us. Our part that we can play, who cannot go, is to send our money. It's to send our material things. It's to encourage him. It's to pray for him. It's to not allow him to be despondent. It's to, it's to, it's to, to make him to be encouraged at all times. That the work can go on without any problem. That's our responsibility. Praise God. That's for a missionary. Praise God. Finish it up. And we have a right to support for us and our families. You don't seem to have raised questions with the other apostles and our master's uh -huh. brothers and Peter in this matters. So why me? Is it just Barnabas and I who have to go it alone and pay our own way? Are soldiers self-employed? Thank you. Thank you. I got you know what? You know what? Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Are gardeners forbidding to eat vegetables from their own gardens? Don't milkmaids get to drink their... Uh, 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 let's just stop at that verse for now. Hmm. Let's stop there for now. I need to point out one or two things there. You see, Paul was making a case here. To lay a foundation, he did not collect what was due him from the Corinthians. By the time we are finishing this, uh, this teaching, we will talk about possible reasons. The ones that were clear reasons he stated in other aspects of the scriptures, and there were some others we can deduce from other things, why he didn't collect from them. We will touch on those ones at a later time, not in this episode. All right. However, it was making a point clear here. Just true to human nature. The unfortunate thing, however, is that we are not mere men. The Bible says we are the sons of God, and that makes us gods. He said, but if you don't know it, we will die like men. That means we are not mere men. Praise God. That's, uh, that's Psalm 82, 5 and 6. Praise God. So here he's saying that because he was not using that right, it was taken for granted. And those who are the ones who are standing on their necks, I'm an apostle too. You must give me money. You owe it to me. He said they never failed. So why is this a big deal when it comes to me and Barnabas? Just because we have spoiled you. <laughs> Praise God. So, it shows the tendency for human beings to take things for granted when they are not enforced. That's what he's bringing out here. It's not like we don't know we have a right, but we are more concerned about your spiritual welfare. We cannot come in the way of your spiritual welfare just because we want to meet our needs. The worst we go to work. Praise God. But that we stand between you and your, and your growth. No way. That's not our job. Our job is to make you grow. If collecting money from you will impede your growth, that we refuse to take that money. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> so that is, my, that is why it is important for a man of God not to just depend solely on these people. If there is an option. If there is a way around it. There are people that cannot combat anything with ministry. They don't have the grace. It is special grace. I laugh when some people, they think that those who are what they call part-time, oh, they are not really committed. Oh, they, are, they have not really given her. What is giving her? What is full-time ministry? Let me tell you, what, what, do, what do you call full-time ministry? What we call full-time ministry most of the time is not that we give all our time to God. It is that we depend on the saints for all that we need. Praise God. Many people who are in part-time, in in part they are more responsible in the ministry than many who are full-time. 
and the results show. Praise God. So for somebody to think he's superior because he's full-time minister to a part-time minister is self-delusion. I mean complete self-delusion. I've been a part-time minister. I am a full-time minister. And I know what I'm talking about. Praise God. I've been on both sides for years. <laughs> Praise God. So I can talk. Many part-time ministers are more effective than many who say they are full-time. What, what people call full-time is just, oh, all my, I, all my needs are met by people in church. Hallelujah. I pray God will give us understanding. So, it was showing them here that he had that right, such as any other man of God has. However, he was not using that right. And he told them not to take it for granted because it was his own prerogative not to use that right. And let nobody turn it around against him. Just like people are using virginity against people who are righteous now. How dare you say you are, you are a virgin at 18? Are you that ugly? Praise God. Paul is now saying, I'm not afraid. I'm not shy. I'm not abashed to, to turn it back to them. To let them know they are the ones that have to check themselves, not me. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. So, it is a right. It can be waived. It can be used. Either way you do it, you have not sinned. It's just like the issue of celibacy. Even if you have the gift of celibacy, you can choose to marry. You have not sinned. Praise God. If you, don't, if, if you, if you, if you have the gift of celibacy, you can choose to marry. You have not sinned. It is only a privilege that you have that you are not using. Hallelujah. And why was, were you given? So that you can focus entirely on serving God without distraction. Hallelujah. So, and if you choose not to use it, you have not sinned. You may not be as effective as you would have been if you didn't have a wife and children. However, you will still be able to do the work of God. It is not a sin. So is this one. Praise God. Why in the first case is provision be made for, for these ministers? It's so that they can be focused. So if the needs can be met without losing focus, that's fine. Praise God. However, it's not the people that are being ministered to that will determine that. It is the minister. Mm. I hope that part is, okay. is clear. Yes, it's clear, but go if ahead, you can just ahead. shed more light. Because okay, there are some okay. uh, ministers who tell you that, oh, I wish to marry, you know, mm, mm. Uh, but I don't feel permitted by God to marry. And... Uh, <laughs> There are some other body of, you know, there are some other denominations, so to speak, who impose, you know, uh, celibacy on their priests. So, okay, so what okay. do you have to say about this? Yes. Uh, I'll just answer very quickly in the modern way of answering. Second question. Uh, celib celibacy is never imposed on anybody in the scriptures. So anybody that's imposing service on anybody is not scriptural. No apologies. Praise God. It is a gift given to some people. It's rare. And they can even choose not to use it. It's not like they can't relate sexually. But they can live without having sexual relationships. Praise God. So they can choose to use it. They have not even sinned. Not to not talk of imposing on somebody who doesn't have it. And we, we have seen the result. We see a lot of molestation of children, homosexualism, and the rest of them in such quarters. Because what God has not ordained, we always buy fire. Praise God. Now, you said some people said they want to marry, but they don't feel permitted by God. Number one, the Bible does not say as many as are led by feeling. As many as are led by the Spirit of God. Romans 8, 14. They are the sons of God. Alright? So, and... If you don't know what to do, I always tell people, you can never be wrong acting in love. Praise God. And what are the scriptures said about it? You have not heard God's voice, but you have seen his word. What does the Bible say? If you know you are burning and you need to have sexual intimacy with the opposite sex, go and marry. That's what the Bible says. 
You know, like somebody says, I'm, I'm seeking God's permission to go and witness, to, 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 go and, to, to, to go and preach the gospel to people. Which permission do you need again? He has told us to go. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it's your choice. You have to make a decision. And I'm not saying. God cannot deal with people specifically on certain issues. However, you don't use that to beat my own head. It's a business between you and God. You see people... Oh, you see, uh, I've been on, 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 the, on, the, on the mountain now for 20 days. What's my business? Why did I send you to mountain? Must I know you are fasting? Do I send you there? If you went to mountain, when you come, if you really went to a real mountain, we will see the results in your life. We will know that you have been somewhere. You don't you need to tell us. If you have to tell us to feel good, you are wasting your time. You are just missing your meal for nothing. That's for sure. That's the same thing. Oh, you know, those of us in full-time ministry, you know, we are just believing in God. You are a beggar. Praise God. You are a beggar. And that's not God's calling for you. God did not bring you, I mean, call you for such ignominy. You know what Hebrews says about the calling of God? Is there no man take this honor to himself? He says it at his call of God. It is an honor to be called by God. And it has to be handled honorably. Praise God. Everywhere you go, you know, uh, you know we are full time. Uh, so we are just trusting God. You know we are full time. What? Why do you see Jesus do that? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, I think I answered your two questions in the, in the, in, in, in the new generation way. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> ten, one to, ten one to ten. Okay. Uh, are we reading King James or... Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Who go into warfare at any time at his own charges? Who planted a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say hi these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the hawks that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for hawksing? Or said he it all together for our six, for our six, no doubt. This is written that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that Hallelujah. he that treasured in hope should be partaker of his hope. Thank you. All you are trying to do here is that that right is sacrosanct from old to enter to new testament, sacrosanct right of a minister. That ministers to people in spiritual things to reap of them kind of things of this life. Okay. I, 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 okay. Okay. Yes. Kind of things. Not just respect and prayers. Oh, we are praying for you, Pastor. We need it. But we need good things of life too. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> like you are enjoying. <laughs> Praise God. We bless you. Bless us. Uh, so when you say bless you, we too will say bless you. Uh, but we don't just say bless you, we bless you with knowledge. And uh, you do bless us with things of this life. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how God has ordained this. Praise God. <laughs> so, it was showing this, that it was sacrosanct right throughout all generations that those that are ministered to, we ministered back onto. But I want us to take notice of something there. He said that plow it should do it in hope. Hallelujah. There is a time in the ministry that it will be as if you are just laboring for nothing. There is a time in the ministry you cannot bring you, you cannot bring your responsibility on the few people that God has sent to you. You will kill them. You are supposed to flee the sheep and not kill it. If you kill it, there is no sheep, there is no there is no wood next year. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you read that in, I think it's NLT. I can't remember the, the very version. He said, he that, uh, uh, said, you will not stop somebody who has planted not to partake of some of the root, of the, of, the, of the fruit rather, and not to partake of some of the milk. Not all. You don't collect all that they have. In the name of any title you call it. 
You can call them, go to Old Testament to go and look for one title to collect all that people should be using to take their themselves of their Hagia parents and of their, of their young families. You collect it because you are pastor. That is not what God says we should receive. That's inconsiderate. God is not inconsiderate. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it's, it's important to clear that. When a ministry is starting, you see some people, young people, they say God has called them to ministry. He told them not to work. He told them to start ministry. No problem, go and start. However, don't be jumping from house to house telling people, you know, I'm full time. You know, I'm full time. Uh, I came here by faith. Then go back to your house by faith. Praise God. Go to your house by faith. Since you have so much faith to come, go with the same faith. Praise God. You see, you begin to, you, you, don't, you don't reap even maize. When you sow maize, you don't reap that day. There's a time to allow it to grow. Even businesses that we do, that's why we don't have generational business in Nigeria. We start eating from it from that day. So we heat the business up. That's what we are doing in ministry too. We can't wait. All my mates are writing jeep. So I must write jeep too. Did they start today? <laughs> They have, they have slept their lives out for men. Many of them don't even remember them. Some of them will have gone to hell. Some of them will have been in jail. Those that God used you for, they won't even remember you. Now, few people remember. And it's what they bring that you are not saying. You say, this one, ask this. I don't have it. I must have it too. You go and put people in your church under pressure. Young people, people that are just growing. Only three people are earning salary in your church. And the responsibility of your five people family is on these people. That is not that is not reasonable. There's a time of sowing. There's a time of seeding. The Bible also says it. A time to sow, a time to reap. Hallelujah. So you but we want to reap from sowing, from the day of sowing. That's not how it works. That's why some ministries never lift from the ground. That's why some ministries they started on the wrong notes and they cannot retrace their steps easily. Because they have enjoyed the largesse of wickedness, largesse of not being reasonable, not being considered the people that we are sent to. These are the things that people see that makes the war to come against us as ministers. I say, look, we didn't see this with Jesus. You people must have another God you are serving. Praise God. And we need to really do some, uh, what they call that, you know, when uh, laundry. We need to do some laundry. <laughs> I mean, legitimate laundry for ourselves before the world. Because our testimony can't. It's what people see of what they make of God. We are his ambassadors. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. 2 Corinthians 3, 2. It says we are the letters that he has written for men to read. We are the epistles. We are the Bible they have and they read. Many of them have different versions in their, in, their, in their closet. They never read them. We are the ones they are reading. It's what they see of us that they make of God. And they have a right to do so. Because he ordained us to be his ambassadors. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20. He said we are his ambassadors from 19. So they have a right to make of God what they see of us. Hallelujah. The way I deal with issue of money and the people that God has sent me to is, is there... Is there Consideration. Is there love? Is there understanding? Is that how God is? We should never forget that. That we are representatives of God on earth. Men cannot see God. Because it, they are not at that level. God is a spirit. Praise God. And they are not spiritual. So they can't see him. What they can make of you, of him, is what they see of us. I pray God will give us understanding. In the name of Jesus. So I'm saying, he's saying there's a time of sowing. Between that time of sowing and reaping, brother, it will be hard. People will make mockery of you. They will call you names. They think that you are, you are, you are, you are a loser. We know the kind of brain God has given you. By now, you should be a professor. We know the kind of things you can do. You will have been a great businessman by now. You now say you are doing ministry. See you now. Can't even take care of your family very well. Don't worry. God Almighty, that ordained seed time and harvest, He will grant grace that the same people come and bow before your God and say, We are sorry, we derided you. 
I promise you, that is how God works. But you must be patient with God. Don't start thinking of money when you start ministry. Some people design their jobs to go and start a ministry that they have not sold anything to. You want to kill the people? And you also want to ride a car like somebody who's in oil company. You want to wear the kind of suit they are wearing? You want to fly the way they are flying? At the expense of these people that you have not shown anything to their lives? I know the remnants will hear me. And they will hear God in my voice. And the Lord will give grace to make necessary amendments. And I know a lot of people, they made these mistakes because of ignorance. But the Bible says God winks at them with ignorance. Now it's calling every man unto repentance. May we receive grace for true repentance in the name of Jesus. If I made a mistake, go back to God. The Bible says in Psalm 11 verse 3, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Verse 4 answers, God is in his holy temple. What does that mean? Only God is the one you can go to. Say, so do I, what do I now do? Do I destroy everything? Only God, only God can destroy the foundation of a building without destroying the building, put a better foundation so that that house can stand. Praise God. So you go back to him. Lord, I missed it. How do you want me to take it from here? I don't want to continue in my error. And the, magnan the magnanimous God, he will reach out to you and he will help you. You need courage. You need good heart to be able to do it. That's the whole essence of bringing this. What do we know? We're only trying to bring little that we know to heart to what you know. And we trust God that this little will amount to much for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, so I think we can, I think just, we can go just go on. We have read, we have read okay. verse 11. Verse to, show, to show that when, 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 when you when sow so into a post life, you expect, you expect back. Mm. If others, verse, verse 12, if others be partakers of this power over you, and not we rather, nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. That is, that is that very, is critical, very verse. critical verse. Mm. Extremely critical. Extremely critical. Read it again, please. Read it again, please. If others be partakers of this power over you, and not we rather, nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer mm. all things, mm. lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. This is one of the four reasons that Paul gave for not receiving from the Corinthians. So that it will not hinder the gospel. He received from the Macedonians because receiving from them would not hinder their spiritual growth. That was a man of God whose contentment was in God, not in what the people of God would give to him. No matter how much he had, if he had there what Corinth was going to give to him to eat, it would be better off for it. But the people would be worse off for it. Because it will have ampered their growth. It will have been a stumbling block for them in one way or the other. It will rather not use his rights than hinder their spiritual progress or the furtherance of the gospel. That was one of the major reasons why he restrained, he refrained from receiving from them. There are situations you see on ground. When you want to go to minister, you are the one that will still give money. Oh, yes. And there's nothing wrong with it. Those are the kind of things that Paul did. He said, I robbed other churches to minister, even minister to you people. He worked hard with his hand. He was ministering to himself and to those that were around him. And yet, he still took money from other places to minister to these Corinthians. Not that they were poor. But they would rather do that than hinder the foreign gospel among them. That was a man who was a servant of God. <laughs> that, is, that was a servant of God. Not a servant of belly. He was more considerate of the people than of his remuneration. And they were even willing to give him more. However, he knew receiving it will have negative impact on the gospel. He said, no way. I would rather die hungry. We are going to see all those scriptures later. We, we think it as much as God made provision, Paul lived in lack for some time of his life. Praise God. He's part of the call. We are servants. 
glory to God. We are servants. That's why I told them, whatever they give to you, eat. Don't complain. Don't give them conditions. Mm. <laughs> the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, he was telling them there. He said, though this threat is there, but we waived it because we don't want to hinder the furtherance of the gospel. Man of God, do you even consider the gospel when you are collecting money? Do you remember that collecting could be a, a hindrance to the gospel? You have the right. You can use it. However, you can be a stumbling block. These are the things that servants consider before they stretch their hand to receive. And those are the kind of servants that God needs at this time. Listen, we are living at the end of time. The standards, God will begin to bring call for them now, more than ever. Things that have passed, they will no longer pass. Write it down. I want to repeat. Things that have passed as if God did not care. God will begin to show that he cares about them. Because the realm of babyhood is gone in the church. God is calling for maturity. So we begin to make more demands on us to live more according to his word. If we want to remain relevant in the scheme of things of God, then we have to begin to up our games. We have to begin to uphold higher standards than what we have uphold till now. No matter how high we have held it, I speak to you prophetically. God will begin to make greater demands on us to do things better than we have always been doing them because the time is running off. And God cannot afford to leave his work in the hand of people who are holding this kind of loose standards, who don't have respect for what matters to him. It's all about what we're going to eat and use. It is time for repentance, brethren. Because after this, it is judgment that comes. You will say, I said so. You can order for a message that we did at the minister's conference. I think it was about two years ago. Maybe two or three years ago now. At Maryland. And then we titled that. Uh, uh, Sister Queen, can you remind me the title of the message? Preparing for the inevitable. We released some words of prophecy there. Come again. Sister Boogie was saying something. 2018, thank you. 2018, labor, no, no, I don't know. It's just one of the ministers' conferences that we had in Maryland. The message was preparing for the inevitable. You need to listen to those messages. Even if you have listened before, you will see how relevant they are for this time that we are living in now. Those things that were prophetic then are happening already in our time and in our land now. You need to order for them so that you can understand what God is doing he had pre-warned us about all the things that are happening in the church in Nigeria now and all over the world. And we need to take it to those things. They are inevitable. They must happen. But how do I position myself that I'm not a victim, but I take advantage of those things to add feathers to my crown with God? That is what that message is all about. The Lord will give us grace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So we have to be mindful. That it's, yes, it's a right but there are times you don't use it right because there are greater things at stake. That was what Paul was exemplifying for us here. Thank you. 13 to 13 14. Verse 13, 1 okay. Corinthians chapter 9. Do ye, not, do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so, had the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live off the gospel. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to see how carefully Paul chose his words. He said that labor at the altar, they feed how? What did he say? They partake. They partake. Read it again. <laughs> Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait, which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? They partake with. <laughs> That's critical. That was why I insisted that you read. They partake with. So the altar partook, they also partook. Everything is not for our personal needs. Praise God. <laughs> 
if we hit the altar, there will not be any altar to partake with again. So we must remember. Yes. Don't you Please. realize that those who work in the temple get their meals from the offerings brought to the temple? And those who uh -huh. serve at the altar get a share of the A share. I love that. They have a share. Praise God. These are the... These are the areas where I say we have to learn to cut our throat. We have to cut our throat. We have to mind our appetite. So that we will not be found as covetous people. We will not be found with avarice. These are things that God hates. The Bible says covetousness. Ephesians 5.5, 5, if I get it right. He said it's, it's just like it's idolatry. Covetousness is like idolatry. Praise God. And this is what many of us are masked in. Possibly because we don't know. Like I said, God is calling for repentance. But remember, after repentance, there's always After room for repentance, there's always space for judgment. My prayer is that this will be a deliverance for us all from the judgment that's imminent. Somebody was discussing with me some things happening in the church recently. And I res responded, I said, this is not the time to say, oh, good for them. It's time for every one of us to ask ourselves, even if we think we are doing well, Lord, is it high? Mm. Like disciples were asking when they said one of them will betray him. They didn't say, oh, I'm sure it must be Peter. Oh, it must be James. Uh, we all know it must be Judas. Mm. They took it personally. They didn't say, me, I'm free. In sobriety, in all humility, they said, Lord, could it be me? Could it? They were not asking for another person. The question is, how much do I live by these things? That's what matters. You know how way I can talk about it. It's not the eloquence of delivery. It is how much of it I live by. That is what God is looking for. He wants me to respond with accuracy. I know I'm not perfect, but I can't keep saying that. I have to keep pressing. I have to keep pressing so that I can be sure that my path is being lighter, brighter and brighter as I'm going towards the perfect day. This is what God expects of us. And we can deliver. Because we have the grace. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, we partake with the altar. We do not eat the altar up. What we do, when we put on due burden, a family of six, depending on the congregation, where only two people are working, is that we eat the altar. Hello? <laughs> Let's read that verse again. And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. With the altar. They share. So when they bring it, it's not just all for us. We should remember to advance the work. Even in business, even in business, we have what we call reinvestment to enlarge the work so that what is bringing the money can be increased and can bring even more. Then we can plant more back. They call it plow back. We plow more back. Then it still brings much more. Then we plow much more back. And it keeps expanding and enlarging. And not just in terms of money, especially in terms of impact among the sons of men. Praise God. So that it's not every time we have to call them, we have to make altar call for every need that the church has. What about this money we have been bringing? It's not all to serve me and my family. I'm supposed to share of what is brought and leave the rest for the advancement of the work. That's the scriptures. That is the arrangement that the New Testament has made for us. That God asked for us in the New Testament rather. Hallelujah. So, verse 15 for, for my time. Even so, had the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. They should live of the gospel. You see, it's very clear. Very, very clear. I have read a lot on this matter for years. There's a school of thought that believe that it's even wrong to receive from God's people. <laughs> There's no scripture to back that up. You have a right to receive. It is not wrong to receive. You can choose to waive your rights. And it does not mean you are, that uh, somebody that has received it is doing wrong. 
That's the balance of the scripture. Praise God. Verse 15, please. I like to read it. It said, in the same way, the Lord ordered okay. that, do, the Lord ordered that those who preach the good news should be supported by those who benefit from it. Hallelujah. Repeating Galatians 6.6. 6. Those who preach the good news should be supported by those that they minister to. Praise God. Thank, Thank you. you. 15. Now, verse 15, King James. But I have used none of these things. Neither mm -hmm. have I written these things that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than mm -hmm. that any man should make me glory, should make my glory void. Thank you. But That's verse 15 now. Is it not done? Is it not over? That's 15, yes. Now, in this verse, Paul brought another reason why he didn't receive from the Corinthians. I told you he brought about four reasons out. Not all here. We see in other scriptures later. Not today. <laughs> so, the second reason here is that no man can stop me from glory in this matter. He needed to make a statement around the Corinthians because they were very wealthy. Go and read the history of that city or the whole of Achaia region. Uh, go and look at the prosperity they had. They were very rich. Just like every church has, uh, wants to have at least a branch in Lagos, Portacot, and Abuja. That was how Corinth was. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and now God is sending everyone to America, not to Afghanistan. That's just the way it was. So, he was saying that because there were so many charlatans around who were in need for money. Nothing else. So did not matter. Hindrance of the gospel under their foot, under their feet. They didn't care. So, point there to make a point that there's a difference between the charlatans and the genuinely called. Praise God. I'm not in this for what I'm going to get. I am in this because it is a mandate God gave to me. I have to do it whether I like it or yes. <laughs> Praise God. Number two, I love God and his people enough that I will even do this for free. Even if God did not ordain that he should support me. That's the servant of God. Hallelujah. That is his servant. That's the one that is not the Lord of the church. That's the servant. Who will do it for free? If it has to be. Hallelujah. So he needed to make a difference. I'm not like the charlatans who I need for money. No. Yes, I have a right to your money, but I need to make a difference in this region. There are times that you need to make such statements. I was in a country about four years ago where our brethren from Nigeria have spoiled ground beyond measure. <laughs> So any time they mention Nigeria, hey, they have come again. Hey. In fact, I learned in a place <laughs> that a Nigerian came, a small town, a place where they used to plant sugar cane and the rest of them. They said a Nigerian came and it was two trailer loads that I used to take things away from that town. Those that didn't have money, told them, go and bring your television. Go and bring your chair. Go and bring everything. And he took it to the city. Praise God. I mean, miserably poor people. And I'm not saying it is wrong to receive from them because they are poor. But we have to be considerate. We have to remember the name of the Lord. We have to remember that testimony before the people. If you are quick to refer to Elijah, Elijah did not leave the woman poorer than she met, he met her. So please be mindful of what you are referring to. <laughs> Praise God. Even the woman that was rich, the widow of Serapath, I'm sorry, the widow uh, of the Shunem, the Shunamite woman, that woman was already rich. That was why he could host the prophet in, his house, in her house. Praise God. However, she was left better orant than she was made by the prophet. The people you minister to, are they better for it? Praise God. Are they better for it? So, I got to that place 
and they uh, already they knew that Nigerians have come again. Ah, <laughs> they have come. But because of the people of God that received us in that place, they trusted them. They also, they were just doing it by faith, trusting God that we will not rub, rub their faces on the floor again, like many have done. So, and we didn't have to talk too much. We got there. We did our program. They're on tape. The testimonies are there. They said with their mouth. So the first day, we finished. They came to me, man of God. There was something we missed out. I said, what was that? He said, offering. I said, oh, it's okay. I, I've noted that. The following day, we, we were finishing. They ran to me. Before we finish again today, so don't forget, oh, we have to do offering. I said, no problem. <laughs> we finished. Then the elders gathered themselves. Said, no, you can't, you can't do this to us. I said, what have I done? <laughs> I said, no. And I told them. I said, I know we have a bad reputation here. Very bad. For your information, I'm not here to collect money. God has provided for our journey everything that we need. And there's no need. If we collect anything from you, it's just to be for you to have opportunity to be blessed. However, because of the testimonies on ground, we need to let you know that it's not everybody that behaves that way. We are here to represent God and to represent that God-owned country, that we are not all thieves, we are not all robbers, we are not people that don't care for people. It was a big fight that day. I said, man of God, we have to make a choice here. Whether I continue this program or we stop. So I have to be able to take a decision. Is it right? But I refuse to use it. I believe God. The testimony stood it tomorrow in that place that at least now, I believe every Nigerian that will have gone there after me, who was a genuine man of God, will be better received. There are times not to use the right. But if you depend only on what he will give you, you will have no choice. Can you see wisdom in the counsel I've been given? God bless you. Let's go on. Okay. 15. Verse 15 now. But I have used none of these things. Neither have I written these things that it should be so done unto me. You see, see how, how very elaborately he had spoken about how they have to take care of their ministers, give to your ministers, I have a right to what you have, you must take care of me, blah, blah, blah. Somebody would have thought, oh, I beg you. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll give you. He said, I'm not saying this so that you can give to me. Wow. Wow. I clap for Paul. Those are the kind of business we need. Hallelujah. Not in it for many. In it for souls. They matter to him more than what they have. What they had rather. Glory to God. And he felt that what was best for them was not to collect money. To bless them and leave them. Glory to God. <laughs> you know, there's a way we blackmail ourselves. Hey, if you don't receive... You don't want us to be blessed. Who told you I have power not to bless you, not to make you blessed? Can't you bless another man of God? Bless them. Praise God. If I don't feel led to collect from you, I have a right not to collect. And you cannot blackmail to collect him. You can't blackmail me to collect him. Praise God. A lot of people put pressure on, that, on, people, on people like that because they think that it makes them feel wrong that they are doing it. And it doesn't mean you are wrong. God knows how he's dealing with everybody. So the fact that you collect everywhere you go does not mean I must collect everywhere I go. I collect where I'm led to receive, where I don't have any resistance. I collect when I feel like I, it's the right thing to do. Where I think it's not the right thing to do, I don't allow pressure to make me do it. And I think that's how we should live. It's honorable. Praise God. Amen. So, he said, I don't, I've not used it. Use that 15, read that 15 for me again, please. Yes, it's, I have never used any of these rights. And I'm not writing this to suggest that I want to start now. Can you In see fact, that? I would rather die than Whoa. lose my rights to Shata boast about Lamba preaching Kasha. without charge. Can you see that? That was his own commitment to God that, look, God, you have done too much for me. Even if nobody is paying, I will preach for, preach for free. And I don't want to talk, talk about it. I want to demonstrate it. 
I love you enough to do it without being paid. It is not wrong for me to be paid, but I can do it without being paid. That's a servant of God. So it was his way of saying the same thing that Samuel, uh, that David said in 2 Samuel 24, 24. When he bought land from Arauna and, I mean, no, to make sacrifice for, for God, for, to God in the days that he numbered this trail and he, he, he incurred the wrath of God over the people. Can we read 2 Samuel 24, 24? This was Paul's own version of 2 Samuel 24, 24 or what David just said there. Listen carefully to what David said. Second <laughs> Samuel twenty four twenty four. Yes. It says, "Oh my God, that's right." But the king said to Aaron, "No, I've that's got it. to buy it from you for a good price. I'm eh? not going to. I've got to God buy it from you for what? A good price. <laughs> Why? Why, boss? I want to give you free. You are our boss. Don't pay. Hallelujah. I send you to go and buy something for me." You say I should leave the money. If you want to give me a gift, give me. I'm the one sending you now. So that next time I want to send you, say this man has come again so that you will not pay. I don't want. Take money. Or else don't run the errand for me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Praise God. I should leave the money. No. If you want to give me something, give me separately. Not that you just leave. How do I know whether it's convenient for you? How do I know you had the money? Fefi did you buy a car? No. Praise God. That's not what I'm called to do. I'm called to help you. Praise God. Read it again, please. Well, the king said to Arana, No, I've got to buy it from you for a good price. I'm not going to offer God my God sacrifices <laughs> that are no sacrifice. Whoa! What a lot of us who are full time, we pride ourselves in that we have left everything. Uh, really? Really? What did you leave? What are you having now? Do they match each other? You left everything. What did you leave? You leave your job. You leave your. You left your business. You left your job. Now it's God not taking care of you now. So what is the big deal? Paul was saying, as long as I'm still paid, I don't feel I'm doing enough to show how much I love God. Oh my God. Oh God. Oh God. I'm just being paid as if I was an engineer. As if I'm still a teacher. As if I'm still in business. As if I'm still a medical doctor in the hospital, serving people and they are paying me. So what, what, what do I glory in? What is the big deal that I provide medical service and they pay me as a doctor? He said, this is where I want to show God that I love him more than money. Hallelujah. Yes, I need money to take care of myself and people around me and to take care of the work of the ministry. However, I will still do this if I'm not paid. And it's not just talking. I want to demonstrate it. Where is the love of God in order we are doing ministry? God will help us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, David said, I will buy it for good amount. He said, because I will not give to God that that cost me <laughs> sacrifices that are no sacrifice. Hallelujah. It looks like sacrifice to people, but actually, yeah, there is no sacrifice. Praise God. Somebody wants to come into ministry and you start reaping the same day and you start enjoying every largesse of the ministry when you have not even sold into anybody's life. And you're starting a ministry, you go and resign your job and put all your burdens on the innocent poor people that God has sent you to. So what are you sacrificed? And you keep harassing them for money every day. So what, where is the sacrifice? Uh, I beg. Let's just remain, uh, let's remain charitable. <laughs> so please, let's go too much on that. So far. Praise God. So, that was what this man of God was telling us. He's saying that, look, 
I'm willing to display my love to God by not allowing myself to be paid at every time I open, open my mouth to say Jesus loves you and I must be paid. No. That's another job I've got. Mm. What we got is not a job. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not a job. I told you we are not in a career. It's not a career we got. It's a calling. Praise God. It's a privilege. It's, a, it's an honor to serve the King of Kings. You see those that work in corporate places, highly corporate places, they are looking for opportunity to, be, to tell you where they are working. That is, this honor is greater than that. I'm a servant of the Most High. Whoa! Can it be better than that? Hallelujah. 17, 18. Okay. Um, for 17. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. Ooh. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto I think you need to read that from other versions to break it down. I think this kind of English is too much for us to understand today. Okay, let me read it from <laughs> verse 16, NLT. Thank you. Yet, preaching the good news is not something I can boast about. I am compelled by God to do it. How terrible for me if I didn't preach the good news. Do you see that? It was a responsibility. I will be irresponsible if I don't preach it. Whether I'm paid or not. Hallelujah. Oh God. That's the right approach. Oh, if I'm paid, fine. Alright? I got no problem. I'll receive. But what if I'm not paid? I'll preach all the same. Glory to God. The fact that some people will take on due advantage of you does not matter. You know? <laughs> don't let's go there. It doesn't matter. Just get the word out. Glory to God. Because it's a way of displaying your, display your love to God. Hallelujah. Verse 16. Yet, preaching the good news is not something I can boast about. I am compelled by God to do it. How terrible for me if I didn't preach the good news. If I were doing this on my own initiative, I would deserve payment. But I have no choice, for God has given me this sacred trust. What then is my pay? It is the opportunity to preach the good news without charging anyone. That's why I never demand my rights wow, when wow. I preach the good news. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you honor me, I receive. But I don't demand. Can you see a servant's heart there? He said, look, I love God enough that I will do this for free all my life. Not even collecting from anybody. So it's a privilege that I have that God told them to give to me. But if they choose not to, I won't make any demand. Hallelujah. I would rather be hungry. <laughs> I would rather go to a farm. I would rather work with my hands and, and make tents to make ends meet. Not only for me, I don't want people around me to be begging around and present God as a beggar. No matter the subscription of begging. Begging is begging. Praise God. Say my hands and minister to me and the needs of those that are around about me. Hallelujah. So he said, a necessity is conferred on me to preach the gospel. He said, so there's no big deal about me preaching the gospel. The big deal is that I'm preaching it at no cost. Hallelujah. Praise God. So he's giving another reason, the third reason now. Why he seldom did not collect money from certain quarters. This is, was not limited only to Corinthians now. He's saying there are situations, I, mean, I preached the gospel for free. I don't demand my rights anywhere. Even where they were giving to him, he didn't demand his rights. He said, yes, I had the rights, but I never demanded. If they gave me fine, but where they don't give me, there's no love loss at all. I don't reduce how I minister there. Ah, <laughs> glory to God. Oh, I, I just pray that young ministers who are not yet formed will listen to these things and take it to them. They will be on the right path. Praise God. So, he gave reason. He said, number one, is that my reward, is I, I, I do it as a reward. Paul is, was not saying the money paid him as a reward. He was saying not collecting money as a reward. That's the third reason. Hallelujah. For him, this one is collecting money for, yeah, there's no reward. But the one I didn't go let pay for, you know God does not owe any man. Hallelujah. 
God must pay. Hallelujah. Is it not better for God to pay than them? They are the ones cheating themselves. God will not allow his servant to suffer unduly. There is a time of planting. There is a time of sowing. It's always difficult. And if you try to escape that, you will end up messing your ministry up. I praise God. May you not do that in Jesus' name. However, Paul was saying here that though I had the right, I waived it because I'm looking forward to a greater reward. That's what I count as reward. It's not what you people can give me. That's a, that's, those are carnal rewards. He called them carnal, carnal things. Same minister to them in carnal things. He says, I need greater reward than that. So he, as long as I can go without what you give to me, I won't tell you not to give me. But if you don't give me, fine. In fact, you are, you are giving me opportunity to receive bigger reward from the Father. Third reason. Hallelujah. These are compelling reasons for true servants. I mean compelling. I didn't say optional. Compelling reasons for servants of God to consider well before they start stretching hand and thinking everything is blessing. Praise God. Alright? So he said, I consider it because of reward. And also he said, that I may not abuse my power, number four reason. <laughs> number four reason. That I will not abuse my power in the gospel. I have the right. But if I begin to make demands, I will not know when I cross over to, to the wrong use of my rights. So my right will become wrong. And I, will not be able to, I may not be able to design it. That's what has happened to many of our brethren. These are children of God. These are servants of God. They are not callous. But it's like, uh, what do they call it? They call it um, uh, a, a continuum. In a continuum, there are, there, are, there are a series of things. All right? From like 1 to 20. One looks very much like two. It's highly different. Two looks very much like number three. Highly different. Just a little. But by the time you, 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 you juxtapose number one with number 15, it looks like they are not connected. But they are, it's just a progression along the same line. That's a continuum. That's what it is. So many times, people cross that horizon without knowing mm -hmm. in the name of right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen those who say they are human rights activists? Mm -hmm. They always go beyond their rights. Mm -hmm. Go and check every one of them. And they try to justify it in the name of fighting for rights. So they used to wrong to right, fight for rights. That was what Paul was running away from. He did not forget he's a man. Man of God. Of God is just a qualifier. We are still men. And we should never forget this. We do not think too highly of ourselves than we ought. Praise God. Paul was trying to protect himself. Somebody said, no, I know where to stop. Oh, just like those that say they know where to stop when it comes to sex. And before they knew, they say it's the devil. Hallelujah. Oh, I know where to stop. You know, by the time we are doing smoking for like 10, 5, 15 minutes, I know it's getting too much. We will just stop. We will not go beyond that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's the same thing that applies here. Praise God. So that was the first reason that he gave for not receiving from them. Finish up, please. To 18. Okay, we are in 99. Beautiful, let's go. Yes. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all. I, I hope you have noticed. Thank you. I hope you have noticed. The principle that is consistent in it all is sacrifice. It's not benefit. Oh God. Oh God, give us servants in our own generation too, like Paul, who are concerned about souls, who are willing to sacrifice and not to sacrifice others, but they are willing to sacrifice themselves for the good of others. Everything is about sacrifice, 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 sacrifice. Not privilege, right. He had them, he knew them, but we never press for them. Glory to God. Let's start again, please. 19 to 23. For though I be free from all men, yet mm -hmm. have I made myself servant unto all, that I may I might gain the more. And unto the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law, to them that are without law, as without law, 
be not without love to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became high as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to, to all men, men, that I might be yes, yes. by all means save some. Save some. Save some. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the what? Not for my stomach's sake. For the gospel's sake. Everything is about sacrifice. Including his rights. He waived it. Even his liberties. He waived them. There were things he could do that were not sinful. But he refused to do them for the sake of the gospel. You remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. He said, if my eating means we take my brother to hell, I would rather not go near me all my life. That was a servant. Glory to God. I hope young ministers are learning, who are not yet formed, so that they will not be formed in the wrong way. God is raising a people who will do it right. Hallelujah. And that's why he's sending a word like this, and in other areas too, using other people to straighten the church out in the areas where we have even, we, have not, we are not even checking. We just saw that that was how people are doing that. We just joined them. We didn't check the Bible. We were just running. Because everybody was running. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, what determined whether Paul would use his privilege or not was not his benefit, but what was most profitable for the gospel. If you run with that principle, brother, you don't need to get to heaven. You can say like Paul that a great reward is awaiting me in heaven. But if you get all the reward here, I wonder what remains over there. That was what Paul was talking about. He said, that is my real reward. It's not the car you are buying for me. It's not the houses you are building for me. Mm. I need a reward that are eternal. And one way I can get that is also to deny myself of what is my right here. Because God will not hold me. So if I really labor and you don't give me, God will have to give me on your behalf. You are the one that is losing out on your reward. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. That is what it means to be a honorable servant of God. He was able to do that because of one thing. He was not depending on them. He was depending on God. If he depended on them, he couldn't do that. Don't forget, if he did those things, he would still not be sinning. And Matthew was able to do that because he was a contented man. <laughs> Acts 20, 33. Acts 20, 33. Okay. It says, I've never, as you so well know, had any taste for wealth or fashion. Wow. I wish I can say that like Paul. I don't think I'm there yet. I don't think I'm there yet. But I can say the other part by the grace of God. But this part, I don't think I'm there yet. Can you read it again so that I can enter my, my spirit very well? I've never, as you so well know, <laughs> had any taste for wealth or fashion. Wow. I will get there one day. By the grace of the Almighty God that called me. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. With this bare end, I took care of my own basic needs and I, those who I, worked with me. We can say that by the grace of God. In everything I've done, I have demonstrated to you <laughs> how necessary it is to work on behalf of the weak Hallelujah. and not Hallelujah. exploit them. Not only to, to work in the ministry, I work even with my hands in spite of ministry. In spite of being in ministry, I was still able to labor. Hallelujah. Philippians 4, 11 to 13 says the same thing. Where I say, I've learned to live an abased life and to live an abounding life. He said, I've learned in all things to be content. Proving the point that I was a contented man. A man that doesn't have this characteristics cannot do what he did. He will find excuses. He will even find scriptures. Why he must collect. So that the people can be blessed. <laughs> Praise God. Number next. He was a hardworking man. Who didn't see ministry as a means of lost money. Read further to 35. You'll not likely go wrong here if you keep remembering that our master said, 
Hallelujah. You are far happier giving than getting. This was the philosophy that Paul followed throughout. He was not eager to receive. Even the ones he received, he still distributed. That, is, that was a servant, brother. Sister, that was, a, that was a servant. It was not to accumulate wealth. He received when he needed to. I said when he needed to. He couldn't have had a choice. He was not a contented man. He was not a hardworking man. He was not a man that had cut his throat. He had never desired wealth or fashion. Glory to God. You know, I, I made a full disclosure the other time. I said, I wish. Because by now, I shouldn't bother whether I wear the same shirt for three years. But I'm not yet there. But I will get there. Jesus was rich because he made himself poor. So we are not saying people should be poor. But we are, the end of our riches is not riches. The end of our riches is that we make others rich and make ourselves poor. Hallelujah. That is the end of the story. It's not just to have plenty of money and everybody is buying to us to collect me ticket. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. But the hardworking man, he didn't see his ministry as a means of lush money. He, he said it is better to give. He was quoting the Lord. Better to, to, to give than to receive. Praise God. And that was what he practiced. Lastly, he had supreme love for God and his people. So, Mr. Minister, do you have these qualities? If you don't, the first thing to do is not to be thinking of how to do these things. It is to put these qualities in place. Then you can do what Paul did. Because we are going to be judged by the gospel he preached. Acts 20, 24. To show his supreme love for God, the gospel, and God's people. He loved God more than he loved his life. 2024. Say, I do not... Say, I do not one I of these things life. move me. <laughs> yes, yes. Neither count I my life dear What is not moving? Not, all the prophecies that they will bind you in Jerusalem, they will beat you in Jerusalem, they, those things did not matter to him. That was his servant. You want to know whether a man is a servant or not? Go and check all these things that we are talking about, Paul. Check your life with his minister. Are you in it for money or for the love of God? God will also give money, but that's not why we are here. Go ahead. But none of those things move me. Neither counts my, my life dear unto myself, hmm. so hmm. that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So a supreme love for God, for his people, for the gospel, constrained him not to jump at his right, collecting money left, right, and center, front and back. Praise God. These are the qualities that we need as servants of God to be able to exercise the kind of restraint this man exercised when he came to his right in the gospel. Praise the Lord. 24 to 27, all that was trying, is trying to show us is that he tried to show us that the greater eternal reward was more important to him than earthly reward. Maybe we should quickly read it before we round off for today. 1 Corinthians 9.24 Though he knows that they which run in a race run her, but one receiveth the prize. So run that he may obtain. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Mm -hmm. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as that one that beateth the hair, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by enemies, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Paul identified here one very great secret. He mentioned discipline, like unto an athlete. I don't have enough time to explain that to you. <laughs> Do you know that many of these world-class athletes are multi-millionaires in dollars? Yet, in training. How many of you know that when Mary Onyele, having won gold medal for Nigeria in the Olympics, whenever she went for a program, she still had like a matron that was taking care of her told her when to sleep, when to eat, when to go for training, whether she wanted it or not. 
she had to obey. These were people she was paying. <laughs> That's the kind of training that we need. That's the kind of discipline that we need to live this kind of life that will please God as servants of God. That will not be as though we are just in the ministry like another career. Having just a flourishing career by having plenty of cars, plenty of houses, a large chunk of money. This one, he said, the secret was discipline. He said, I'm not just running to finish. I want to finish well. Ha, glory to God. May you finish well also in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will also finish well. That you will take it to these instructions. This was a man that finished well. This was a man that finished his exam, marked it, and said, I passed. Oh, glory to God. That's the way I want to end. That's how I want to end. He said, I'm sure I've finished my course. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've kept the faith. Glory to God. Oh my God. What a life. He said, I subjugated my body. I pummeled it. I beat it to submission. If I needed to fast, I fasted. If I needed to do anything, I did it. Just to make sure that I don't allow the flesh to rule me. Hallelujah. That was what this set of ministers did not do in Philippians chapter 3. Can you help me read? Verse 19. They couldn't put their appetites in subjection. They couldn't cut their throat. So the gift of God became a trap for them. Hallelujah. Paul said, no, me. I don't just want to finish so-so. I want to finish well. And if that will happen, I have to live my life as an athlete hoping to win medal in the Olympics. Praise God. Who could not joke with his, with his trainings, with all the necessary, the requisite discipline? Do you know that, that um, Austin Boat, when he was going for the Olympics, where he won four gold medals, did you know, they, they told us that he left, his girlfriend did not know where he went to train. Two months before Olympics, his girlfriend couldn't trace where he was. He was too focused on the medal to remember the pleasure of sex with his girlfriend. That's kind of focus. That's kind of discipline that we need as servants of God. Not focusing on mammon. God will provide for our But we, we don't make it our focus. Whether they give us money or not, we are just too, too determined to please the Lord. We are, and we, are, we, we put our body, we beat it. Paul said, I beat my body to submission. I subject it. I make it my slave by force. That's what that word means. Go and check it in the lexicon. I beat it to submission. I beat my flesh to submission. He can't do what he wants to do. He does what I want to do. I am in, on the inside, not the flesh. The flesh cannot be ruling me. I put it under submission. He said, the way I'm running is not just to finish so-so. I want to finish well. I want to win. And if I'm going to win at that level... I must exercise all the discipline I need, I, I need to exercise. Praise God. That was the kind of discipline that this kind of message I want to read about, they lacked. Read from 17 to 19. Philippians, Brethren, Philippians, Philippians 3, 17. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so, as ye have us for an example. He said, be followers of me and mark them who walk like us. Yes. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Wow. How can God's servant be called enemy of the cross? So, the cross which he's supposed to carry and be selling to others to carry, now he has become the enemy of the cross. A call has become a curse for his life. Go ahead. How did he get to that point? Whose end is destruction? Wow, whose wow. God is their belly? Their God is their belly? And whose glory is in their shame? The glory in their shame. All their glory is about the life issues of this life. Where they have been, how much they have, who they shook hands with, who came to their office. Those are the things that the glory in. <laughs> Praise God. Them, oh God. Remember I said... When you minister to them in spiritual things, they should minister to you in carnal or earthly things. But it's not saying, don't mind those things, though they give them to you. 
Don't let them steal your heart away. Because you have a responsibility to run and win. If you're going to run and win, you must of necessity discipline yourself. You have to cut your throat, cut your appetite. So that you will, it's not everything that comes you call God's blessings. May the Lord bless and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Get grace to make necessary amendments. To be able to fit in to the kind of ministers that he's looking for at this kind of time. In the name of Jesus. May he count you worthy. May he count me worthy. God bless you and keep you till we see you again in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, wow. What an awesome session. Thank you so much, Pastor Daly. You know, we've had so much to learn today and uh, I'm happy to be part of this. Thank you for watching this to the very end. Uh, faith in God, it cannot be overemphasized. Total dependence of God, not depending on, even though the people has the right, they have the responsibility to give. But we shouldn't depend on them. Our total dependence should be on God. Contentment, so key. And consideration for people. There are times that people even give, but you have to refuse it, you know, out of consideration for them. And uh, one of the major things we saw in the life of Paul was that he was so concerned for the kingdom. So anything that was going to tamper with the kingdom, he rather sacrifice than allow the kingdom of God to suffer. And these are the kind of ministers that God is looking for at this time. Uh, lastly, love for God, love for God, discipline, hard work, so much, so much to chew. We need to just listen to this over and over again. And I believe that the grace of God that, um, that backs up his word is available and it's, uh, it is ours already in Jesus' name. Thank you so Amen. much for watching. Uh, please, the message that Pastor referred to preparing for the inevitable, you'll find a link to it in the description box. Do well to listen to it. Don't forget to join us again next week, same time. Uh, do remember to share this with your friends. It's due from the top, courtesy of Builders of God Ministry. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hey,